G'day folks. For the benefit of anybody who hasn't seen my video about my turret playing up, I've included 40 seconds or so of it misbehaving um, to follow this introduction. And then at the end, um, we've got it behaving itself. Here we go. Okay, so this is homing the tool um, in manual mode. And we're going to click on tool one. Okay, that found it fine. Okay, now I'll click on previous tool. And there the turret stopped and I've just got to wait for the tool turret non-functioning label to come up. In fact, it's saying it's on tool eight, which would have been the previous tool. That previous video was actually made so that I could send it to a expert on the Hercus so that he could try and give me some idea what was wrong with it and he suggested firstly the micro switch is not being correctly adjusted I tried adjusting it myself but I ended up with a turret that was just spinning all the time it just wouldn't stop so I took the phone a friend option and called someone who knows about electronics I'll be honest, when people start talking about normally open, normally closed, series, parallel, my eyes glaze over and my head falls off. So it's far better to get someone else in to do that sort of work. Here's the two micro switches mounted together. And here you can see a double pocket. And then there's seven of those single pockets. The single pockets are for the counting micro switch. And the double pocket operates the other micro switch which homes or takes a turret to tool number one. Here's the micro switches when I pulled them out you can see they look fairly good condition um, and they proved to be working fine. They replaced these ones a couple of years ago and as you can see these ones are really not well. So here's the two micro switches mounted in place and you can see the rest of the contraption that makes this thing work. This assembly is largely responsible for the way the turret works. Um, you can see the wood rough key there, that's for a gear. The gear drives it backwards and forwards and when it goes for one way those pins are retracted along that thread that you can see at the left hand side and when it reverses the pins are pushed out into a plate. Here you can see the pins extended and they go out into another plate. Two of them are location pins or locking pins and the other one actually forms an electrical contact. When the pins extend they go into this hardened plate. So two of them will be locking the plate in place and the one in the center, the more tapered pin, doesn't actually touch the sides it just goes straight through to touch on that brass plate that you can see behind the hardened plate. This is with the hardened plate removed and I've cleaned the brass plate up some to make sure it's nice and clean and if you look closely you can see there is a PVC insulator into which that brass ring is sitting. I think this shows the PVC insulator a bit more clearly. The one from Hercus, the original one, had just disintegrated so I made one out of PVC. Now you can see a white wire there. That white wire is actually let into that brass plate and it just goes out through a hole in the cast iron casting. This shows the plate that holds that brass ring in place attached to the turret assembly. Before anybody starts jumping up and down, this is a disassembly photograph, not an assembly photograph. That swarf wouldn't be there if I was reassembling it. Alright, so no letters to the editor or anything like that. Unfortunately, this is the only photo I have of this plate in place. There's the gear on the other end of the motor. The motor's the other side of that cast iron plate. There you can see that cast iron plate is assembled up and the gear is meshing, the pinion is meshing with that gear. There you can see the motor 
and the motor plate assembled to the other plate and that's how it looks when it's all put back together okay let's have a look at the turret working this is not the first test that we did um, I was so confident it was working okay I actually put a out of balance weight on it so that we could see and I ended up I created a program that was just a program of tool changes and then I created a subroutine and we ran it for about five minutes um, no I don't have five minutes here I know you're almost asleep but hang in there we're nearly finished so a big thank you to Phil my electronics friend and thank you for watching